Facebook. But good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today again. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, one of my, uh, what's becoming one of my favorite topics, which is uh, intimacy with the Lord. Um, I know I'm no expert on that, um, but um, in my 40 years of uh, walking with the Lord, I've uh, picked up a few uh, clues and uh, it does help me considerably. And uh, in order to um, uh, you know, touch on this issue, we are going to um, examine uh, Psalm 15. So while you're turning there, I am going to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, that you have designed us for intimacy. You have created us for connection. You desire us to be uh, one with you. That's how intimate you want to be with us. And Lord, uh, we crave that intimacy, Lord, if we let our uh, guard down, Lord, we understand that uh, that's really nothing more than that. We don't want anything more in our lives than to be that close to you. And Lord Jesus, we uh, just pray that all the hindrances to our intimacy with you would be obliterated this morning in the name of Jesus. So Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for my friends. And Lord, uh, help us, Lord, to uh, have a clear understanding of what you're saying in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's take a look at Psalm 15. Uh, this is um, a Psalm of David, and uh, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It's a short Psalm, uh, and if you have a chance to look there uh, with me, please do so. Otherwise, in para mis hermanos latinos voy a hablar en español en 15 minutos. Um, who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Now, I'm going to stop there for a moment in chapter just verse 1. Um, this is an invitation for intimacy. This is an invitation for entering into his sanctuary, which uh, none of us really have the right to do outside of his invitation. Is that right? Yes, he sent Jesus to die for us, to pay the price for our sins. And without that, there's no righteousness even possible. But I'm not here talking about a theological explanation of how things work. I am here to talk about um, how on earth, how we can attain a relational intimacy with our Lord. Uh, my camera's giving me a hard time this morning. Let me fix that. There we go. So, so what I see here is uh, he's saying, you want to enter the presence of God on his holy hill? Good morning, Diana. Now, these are some of the things that, we, that, need, that, you know, that will be helpful. These are hints for achieving intimacy, not just with God, but with any human being. And by my saying that, um, I am um, analogizing or, you know, making a comparison between achieving intimacy with the Lord and achieving intimacy with uh, your spouse, uh, with any family member or any friend. I mean, what draws us closer together? And I believe how we treat each other is a large part of that equation. So let's take a look now. We're doing Psalm 15. Let's look at verse 2. Uh, those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. And I just praise God for the, his word. Uh, and again, vamos a hablar en español a, la, a, a partir de 15 para la 8. Um, this, this is not an exclusive list, but this is a list, which I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty with this this morning. Um, there we go. Um, Bendiciones, see. Um, let's take a look. You know, I'm going to start with the one that um, really sticks out at me from this psalm, and that's in uh, verse 4. Um, who keep their promises even when it hurts. You know, you can really tell who a quality person is, an, a person of integrity, by whether they will do what they have promised to do, even if it's uh, inconvenient or it becomes inconvenient case in point I make an appointment to meet with somebody at three o'clock on Thursday afternoon and then 
Um, that's like three days off. And then on Wednesday, they get a better offer. Uh, somebody else can either, you know, whatever the situation is, but they get a better offer. Then they're sitting there in their mind and they're thinking, how am I going to blow off Tony so that I can uh, ha achieve this better opportunity? You know what I'm talking about. And so what happens is um, a number of different things can race through your mind. But the way I've learned to approach this, and because to me, what, if my word is my bond, my word is who I am, if I don't keep my word, even in small things, then, you know, then nobody's really going to know who I am. Um, Buenos dias, Maria. It's good to see you. Buenos dias, Pastor Leonardo. Uh, so what we need to do is, you know, if I really need to get out of that commitment that I've made, so if I'm the one that wants to get out of the three, three o'clock appointment on Thursday, then I'm going to call up the friend. And I'm going to say, hey, I know this may be inconvenient, but I'm asking a favor. Is there any way we can reschedule this? And they may say no. And if they say no, then I'm stuck with it. And I'm going to do what I promise to do, even if it hurts. That's what this means. And that kind of person has a chance for achieving greater intimacy, not just with the person that he talked with, but with God. You see, the person with whom you decide that you're going to just bail out at the last minute and not tell them, you know, they're going to keep that in mind. They say, well, you know, I mean, I could ask Tony to be involved next time, but he's probably going to bail on me like he did last time. And you can't, you can't build trust on that. There's no bridge building there. There's no way of connecting. So it's an intimacy breaker. It's not an intimacy maker. And in this, an intimacy maker with the Lord is when he looks at us and he sees a faithful heart and he sees somebody who's willing to be that person no matter where they are, that if they're going to um, <clears throat> make a commitment, they're going, to, they're going to do it. And that's why sometimes people say, oh, believe it or not, I'm a little slow in making commitments. And it's because I understand the importance of the commitment. I just can't get out of it willy nilly anytime I want. So this is really, to me, absolutely key to having intimacy with God or with other human beings. Um, buenos dias, oh, Joseph. Dios, gracias. Um, let's take a look at some other things here. Uh, you know, it starts off in verse 2 with those who lead blameless lives and do what is right. Well, you know, that sounds kind of intimidating. Oh, blameless life. Well, you know... Um, you know, what's God supposed to say that, you know, you, you know, you can have greater intimacy with me, even though you sin a lot. You know, he's not going to go for that. You know, he's looking for the people who are striving and aspiring to be blameless. Now, we're, I know we're blameless in Jesus, but that blameless ought to be not just imputed to us, but imparted to us. That blamelessness, that righteousness needs to spread throughout our whole being, body, soul, and spirit. I've been walking with Jesus 40 years, and I'm still a mess, but I can tell you, I am nowhere near the mess I used to be. And I thank God for that. And you know what? The, the more I demonstrate that I am seeking to escape the mess that, I, that is my life or has been my life, the more God looks at me and says, you know what? That's my guy. He's really trying hard not to live a life that dishonors me or hurts other people. Because, you know, if you're dealing with people that are hurting other people and they do that regularly and they really don't care, you can't trust that they're not going to hurt you too. So, it's again, it's not an intimacy maker. It's an intimacy breaker. But when I demonstrate that when I do something wrong, that I confess my sin to that person, that I seek to make restitution, I do everything I can to make up for it, and I show genuine signs of, of emotions which demonstrate that I am remorseful, well, that, that makes intimacy. I mean, I can be, I, and on some of my friends and me, I mean, we've been the chief of sinners, and yet because we hate sin, we hate what it did, and we hate what it did to others, I can have confidence in those other people that they're not going to repeat that behavior with me. Because, you know, we're not, naturally, we're human beings. We're going to put the walls up. We're going to say, you know what? I ain't going there. If you do that again, and if, I, if there's any big risk that you're going to do that again, I'm out of here. And, you know, they may say, oh, hi, how are you? God bless you. But, you know, you're not going to, have, you're not going to enjoy times of intimacy and, and friendship. And that's what this is all about. We, you know, we live in a Facebook world where we have, you know, 2,000 friends, but we have no 
We're very few people with whom we can really let our hair down and share things of intimacy. And I'm telling you, Psalm 15 is a roadmap to get you there. Uh, if you want intimacy, if you want closer connection with people, I believe every human being is wired to want that. This is what you have to do. And here's another one who speak the truth from their sincere hearts. Oh my gosh. Yeah, be sincere and don't lie. Don't, don't spin tall tales. You know, evangelists, if you know, if you want 20 people in your, you know, evangelistic campaign, don't say you want 50. You, you want 20. You know, that's it. Be accurate with your numbers. Be accurate with what you say. Do not exaggerate. Because people who exaggerate can't, you know, you just can't trust how much they're, you know, they're padding the truth. So, no, just speak the truth. Uh, Jesus says if you say anything more than yes or no, you know, it's coming from the devil. So I want to really encourage you with that this morning. Um, those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends, verse 3. Wow, speaking evil of your friends. I mean, well, what kind of hypocrisy is that? You know, you say you walk up to them and say, hey, friend, I love you. How are you? Let's go get a cup, cup of coffee. And as soon as they're out of your presence and you're talking to somebody else, you're, you're speaking evil about them. You're saying, oh, man, you should have seen what Joe Blow did. Oh, man, I can't believe he did that. Don't you think that's bad? I mean, come on. What kind of friendship is that? You know, that person is going to figure it out. I mean, you know. There's nothing hidden that won't be disclosed. And when they see what they, and when they find out what you said and what you did, you, know, you think that's an intimacy maker or is that an intimacy breaker? How about um, refusing to gossip? Same thing. You know, it's the same, same thing I talked about. Um, speaking evil, refusing to gossip. I mean, there has to be a decision in your heart about everybody that you are just not going to gossip. You're just not going to talk about other people. I just don't go there. I try my best not to go there anymore. I'm not saying I never did, um, but I am saying that I understand that on this planet, it hurts people when you gossip about them it, and it hurts your relationship with them. Because even if they don't find out about it, you know you did it. And you know there's something inside of you that says, man, I'm a hypocrite. And, you, and you're going to even, you know, without even realizing it, you're going to start to draw away from that person because you talked about them. Yeah, I know. How about verse 4? Now we're talking about intimacy with God. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord. You know, I hate those things that God hates and I love those things that God loves. That is my desire in life. That is what I am looking for. And I just want to encourage you to do the same thing. So, you know, God loves everybody, but he hates sin. But you know, when people become in agreement with sin, and they do sin repetitively and without concern, then what you're seeing here is that not only are they, are they becoming a stench in the nostrils of God, but God begins to uh, despise that. You know, not everybody's making it to heaven, guys. Not everybody. Um, and frankly, um, we're not entering God's holy hill with rebellious uh, subordinate hearts that say, you know what, I'm going to live any way I want and God can go pound sand. And you now this, these are the kind of people that think in their head and their heart um, that it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. Um, I mean, what an evil statement that we're going to presume upon the grace of God. You know what happens when you presume upon the grace of God? Um, you don't, you don't, uh, no. You become like what Satan tried to get Jesus to do when he tried to get him to turn the rocks into bread, when he tried to get him to uh, uh, you know, accept uh, all the kingdoms of the earth so, so long as he would worship Satan or throw himself off the top of the temple. You know, Jesus, in response to that, said, there, it was, you know, Satan tempted Jesus with Psalm 91. He says, throw yourself off the temple top of the temple for he will command his angels concerning thee that uh, that you know to keep charge of you in all your ways so that you won't strike your foot against the stone i mean satan was quoting psalm 91 it's everybody's favorite psalm these days right but jesus says no it is written you shall not put the lord your god to the test we're not going to test god we're not going to put ourselves in a situation where he has to deliver us or he has to forgive us no, it don't work that way. That's not a relationship builder. That is not in, that is that does not make intimacy. That breaks intimacy. And you know, I mean, what is what is 
broken intimacy with the Lord look like on that day you're in heaven? You're seated there at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and Jesus is to your left, and you turn to him and you say, pass the salt. <laughs> and if there's no intimacy there, he's going to kind of go like this, right? He's going to say, you do it. He's going to say to somebody else. I mean, I don't know. But it seems to me that if there's unforgiveness in our hearts, um, if there's um, these kind of intimacy breakers, um, you know, we're in danger of him looking at us saying, get away from me, you evildoers. I don't know you. Jesus doesn't really know and hang out with people that do the things that are warned about in Psalm 15. He doesn't know that. But Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? Matthew 7. And he'll say, get away from me, you evildoers. I don't know you. So our best chance for overcoming um, the sin of the world, our best chance of obtaining um, a place with our Lord forever and ever is through intimacy with our God. And, our, and there's something inside of us that has to strive to be like him. And, you know, isn't that the case with all the human beings that you're friends with? Um, you try to find things in common. You want to do things that are the same. Buenos dias, mis hermanos latinos. Vamos a hablar en, en español en un minuto. Um, so I want to encourage all my English-speaking friends today, and let's pray that God will make us intimacy makers. He'll put that in our heart, not intimacy breakers. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God, for uh, your word today. Thank you, Lord, for how much you love us and, Lord, how, you, Jesus, you came to show us the way and that you are the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through you. So, Lord, we uh, come to you this morning and we thank you and we bless you, Lord, that you are fortifying and you are making my friends stronger so that they will see their need to enhance their intimacy with you and that they will follow this roadmap by your grace and seek uh, a communion with you which is heavenly. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My English-speaking friends, that's it for this morning. I have to go attend to my Spanish-speaking friends now, but God bless you and I'll see you Monday at 730.